Vina Fay Ray was a Canadian-born American actress most noted for playing the female lead in King Kong. Through an acting career that spanned 57 years, Ray attained international renown as an actress in horror movie roles. She was one of the first Scream Queens. After appearing in minor movie roles, Ray gained media attention being selected as one of the Wampus Baby stars. This led to Ray being contracted to Paramount Pictures as a teenager, where she made more than a dozen movies. After leaving Paramount, she signed deals with various film companies, being cast in her first horror film roles among many other types of roles, including in The Bowery and Viva Villa, both huge productions starring Wallace Beery. For IKO Radio Pictures, Inc., she starred in the film with which she is most identified, King Kong. After the success of King Kong, Ray made numerous appearances in both film and television before retiring in 1980. Early life, Ray was born on a ranch near Cardston in the province of Alberta, Canada, to Mormon parents, Wiener Marguerite Jones, who was from Salt Lake City, Utah, and Joseph E. Bill Ray, who was from Kingston upon Hull, England. She was one of six children. Her family returned to the United States a few years after she was born. They moved to Salt Lake City in 1912 and moved to Luck, Utah in 1914. In 1919, the Ray family returned to Salt Lake City, and then relocated to Hollywood, where Faye attended Hollywood High School. Early Acting Career In 1923, Ray appeared in her first film at the age of 16, when she landed a role in a short historical film sponsored by a local newspaper. In the 1920s, Ray landed a major role in the silent film The Coast Patrol, as well as uncredited bit parts at the Hal Roach Studios. In 1926, the Western Association of Motion Picture Advertisers selected Ray as one of the Wampus Baby Stars, a group of women who they believed to be on the threshold of movie stardom. She was at the time under contract to Universal Studios, mostly co-starring in low-budget westerns opposite Buck Jones. The following year in 1927, Ray was signed to a contract with Paramount Pictures in 1928. Director Eric von Stroheim cast her as the main female lead in his film The Wedding March, released by Paramount. While the film was noted for its high budget and production values, it was a financial failure, but gave Ray her first lead role. Ray stayed with Paramount to make more than a dozen films and to make the transition from silent films to talky films horror films and King Kong. After leaving Paramount, Ray signed to various film companies. It was under these deals that Ray was cast in various horror films, including Dr. X. However, her greatest known films were produced under her deal with RKO Radio Pictures, incorporated her first film under RKO was The Most Dangerous Game, co-starring Joel McCrea and shot at night on the same jungle sets that were being used for King Kong during the day, with the leads from both films. Ray and Robert Armstrong, appearing in both movies. The Most Dangerous Game was followed by Ray's most memorable film, King Kong. According to Ray, Gene Harlow had been RKO's original choice, but because MGM put Harlow under exclusive contract during the pre-production phase of the film, she became unavailable and Ray was approached by director Ray and C. Cooper to play the role of Anne Darrow, the blonde captive of King Kong. Ray was paid $10,000 to play the role. The film was a commercial success. Ray was reportedly proud that the film saved RKO from bankruptcy. Ray's role would become the one with which she would be most associated. Later career, she continued to star in various films, but by the early 1940s, her appearances became less frequent. She retired from acting in 1942, after her second marriage. However, due to financial exigencies she continued in her acting career, and over the next three decades, Ray appeared in several film roles and also frequently on television. Ray was cast in the 1953-54 ABC situation comedy, The Pride of the Family, as Catherine Morrison. Paul Hartman played her husband, Albie Morrison. Natalie Wood and Robert Hyatt played their children, Anne and Junior Morrison, respectively. Ray appeared in three episodes of CBS's courtroom drama Perry Mason, the first of which was the case of the prodigal parent aired June 7, 1958. In 1959, 
she portrayed murder victim Lorna Thomas in the case of a watery witness. In 1965, she played voodoo practitioner Mignon Germain in the case of the fatal fetish. In 1959, Ray was cast as Stella Marsh in the episode The Second Happiest Day of the CBS anthology series Playhouse 90. Another 1959 role was in the episode The Morning After of CBS's Alfred Hitchcock Presents. In 1960, she appeared as Clara in an episode of 77 Sunset Strip, Who Killed Cock Robin? Another 1960 role was that of Mrs. Staunton, with G. Perot as her daughter, in the episode Flight from Terror of the ABC adventure series, The Islanders. Ray appeared in a 1961 episode of The Real McCoys titled Theatre in the Barn S4-Ep 23. In 1963, she played Mrs. Brubaker in the episode You're So Smart, Why Can't You Be Good? Episode of the NBC medical drama about psychiatry, The Eleventh Hour. She ended her acting career in the 1980 made-for-television film, Gideon's Trumpet. In 1988, she published her autobiography, on the other hand, in her later years, Ray continued to make public appearances. In 1991, she was crowned Queen of the Beaux Arts Ball presiding with King Herbert Hunk. She was approached by James Cameron to play the part of Rose Dawson Culvert for his 1997 blockbuster Titanic with Kate Winslet to play her younger self, but she turned down the role in the part of Rose was given to Gloria Stewart. She was a special guest at the 70th Academy Awards where the show's host, Billy Crystal, introduced her as the beauty who charmed the beast. She was the only 1920s Hollywood actress in attendance that evening. On October 3, 1998, she appeared at the Pine Bluff Film Festival, which showed the wedding march. In January 2003, the 95-year-old Ray appeared at the 2003 Palm Beach International Film Festival to celebrate the Rick McKay documentary film Broadway, The Golden Age by the legends who were there, where she was also honored with a Legend in Film Award. In her later years, she also visited the Empire State Building frequently, once visiting in 1991 as a guest of honor at the building's 60th anniversary, and also in May 2004, which was among her last public appearances. Her final public appearance was at an after-party at the Sardis restaurant in New York City, following the premiere of the documentary film Broadway, The Golden Age by the legends who were there. Personal life, Ray was married three times a euro to the writers John Monk Saunders and Robert Riskin and to the neurosurgeon Dr. Sanford Rothenberg. She had three children, Susan Saunders, Victoria Riskin, and Robert Riskin, Jr. She became a naturalized citizen of the United States in 1933. In her autobiography On the Other Hand, a life story she declares herself a Republican. Death. In 2004, Ray was approached by director Peter Jackson to appear in a small cameo for the 2005 remake of King Kong. She met with Naomi Watts, who was to play the role of Anne Darrow. She politely declined the cameo, and claimed the original Kong to be the true king. Before filming of the remake commenced, Ray died in her sleep of natural causes on August 8, 2004, in her Manhattan apartment. Her friend Rick McKay said that she just kind of drifted off quietly as if she was going to sleep. She just kind of gave out. She was 96 years old. Ray is interred at the Hollywood Forever Cemetery in Hollywood, California. Two days after her death, the lights of the Empire State Building were extinguished for 15 minutes in her memory. In the 2005 film, Carl Denham mentions he hired Dan Darrow, because Faye was unavailable. Honors. In 1989, Ray was awarded the Women in Film Crystal Award. Ray was honored with a Legend in Film Award at the 2003 Palm Beach International Film Festival. For her contribution to the motion picture industry, Ray was honored with a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame at 6349 Hollywood Boulevard. She received a star posthumously on Canada's Walk of Fame in Toronto on June 5, 2005. A small park near Lee's Creek on Main Street in Cardston, Alberta, her birthplace, was named Fayray Park in her honor. The small sign at the edge of the park on Main Street has a silhouette of King Kong on it, remembering her role in the film King Kong.
A large oil portrait of Ray by Alberta artist Neil Boyle is on display in the Empress Theatre in Fort McLeod, Alberta. In May 2006, Ray became one of the first four entertainers to ever be honored by Canada Post by being featured on a postage stamp. Filmography See also Canadian pioneers in early Hollywood Footnotes External links Fay Ray at the Internet Movie Database Fay Ray at All Movie Fay Ray at the TCM Movie Database Fay Ray at the Internet Broadway Database Northern Stars CBC Car News colon Feyre dies at 96.